Hi guys, in the next series of videos we're going to take a look at what are alcohols, classes of alcohols, trends in the boiling points of our alcohols, the solubility of alcohols, alcohols versus alkanes, the oxidation of alcohols, an exam style question and finally a summary. So let's begin by discussing what are alcohols. Well alcohols form a homologous series. Our alcohols are saturated and what we mean by this is that they contain only single carbon to carbon bonds. Our alcohols have a general formula and this general formula is CnH2n plus 1OH. And we'll take a look at some alcohols and see how their formula fits the general formula in just a second. As we expect in our homologous series, we see a gradation in the physical properties of our alcohols. So here we have our first five alcohols. We have methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol and pentanol. Let's go ahead and fill in the boiling points of our alcohols so we can see the gradation in the physical properties. Methanol, which has only one carbon, has a boiling point of 65 degrees Celsius. Ethanol, with two carbons, has a boiling point of 79 degrees Celsius. Propanol, with three carbons, has a boiling point of 97 degrees Celsius. Butanol, 117 degrees Celsius. And pentanol, 138 degrees Celsius. As you can see, as the carbon chain length increases within our alcohol molecule, the boiling point increases too. And that's a trend that we'll take a look at a little bit later in this video. As we expect in our homologous series, our alcohols have similar chemical properties as well. So now we've discussed the general idea of our alcohols and the homologous series they belong to, let's take a look at the classes of alcohols that we have. Our alcohols can be subclassified into three groups, the primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. Looking at our primary alcohols, these are alcohols where the hydroxyl functional group, the functional group that we see in alcohols, is attached to a carbon with no more than one alkyl group. So here we have the general formula for our primary alcohol, and you can see that carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, where an R is used to represent the alkyl group. And we can see that carbon attached to our hydroxyl group is attached to only one alkyl group. As you might expect, in our secondary alcohols, the hydroxyl group is attached to a carbon with no more than two alkyl groups, which we can see here and here. These can be the same alkyl group or they can be different. And finally, in our tertiary alcohols, the hydroxyl group is attached to a carbon with no more than three alkyl groups. As you can see, we have one, two, three alkyl groups in our tertiary alcohol. So now we've had a look at primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols, let's take a look at some of the trends we observe within our alcohols. Earlier in this video we looked at a specific trend in one of the physical properties of this homologous series. We looked at the trend that we observe in the boiling points of our alcohols and we saw that as the chain length increases, the boiling point increases too. This is because as the chain length increases, the molecules get longer. And as the molecules get longer, there are more surface area contact. If we compare our molecule of ethanol over here with one, two carbon atoms to this molecule of hexanol with one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms, hexanol is comparatively much longer. It has a longer carbon chain. Now, as in our hexanol, our longer molecule, there are more surface area contacts. The London forces of attraction are stronger. With a shorter chain alcohol, there'll be weaker London forces of attraction. However, between the molecules of our longer chain alcohols, there'll be stronger London forces of attraction, which require more energy to overcome, and therefore the boiling point increases. So now we've had a look at the trends that we observe in the boiling point of our alcohols. Let's take a look at the solubility of our alcohols. Now interestingly, alcohols are soluble in polar solvents, and we can understand this by remembering that like dissolves like. The hydroxyl group, our functional group in our alcohols, is polar, and we know that water molecules are also polar. And so as we know that like dissolves like, we can see that our alcohols will dissolve into our water. Our alcohol molecules actually form hydrogen bonds with water molecules, as you can see here. And this interaction, these intermolecular forces of attraction between our alcohol and water molecules, are what allows the alcohols to dissolve into the water.
So now I've had a look at the solubility of our alcohols as well as some of the trends that we see in them, let's compare alcohols to the appropriate comparative alkanes. We discussed the trends that we observe in the boiling point of our alcohols. Well, interestingly, alcohols have a higher boiling point than the comparative alkane. And this is because, unlike alkanes, our alcohols are able to form into molecular hydrogen bonds. That's hydrogen bonds between the molecules of alcohols. And we know these hydrogen bonds to be the strongest type of intermolecular force of attraction. So, the forming of these strong hydrogen bonds allows our alcohols to have a higher boiling point than the corresponding alkane. If we take a look at the alcohol and the corresponding alkane, we can see just that. Here we have propane. Propane has one, two, three carbons and has a structural formula of CH3, CH2, CH3. Propane has a boiling point of minus 42 degrees Celsius. If we look at propanol, which also has one, two, three carbons, it's the comparative alcohol. Propanol has a structural formula of CH3, CH2, CH2OH, and it has a boiling point of 97 degrees Celsius. So we can see that the comparative alkane has a much lower boiling point. Secondly, if we compare the volatility, the volatility is a tendency of a substance to evaporate and as their boiling points are higher than the comparative alkanes the alcohols are less volatile than the corresponding alkane they are less likely to evaporate through the process of oxidation our alcohol molecules lose atoms of hydrogen these atoms of hydrogen are lost from the hydroxyl group and the carbon that's bonded to our hydroxyl group. So if we have a look, we'll see that it's this atom of hydrogen and this atom of hydrogen that are lost. And we form this double bond between our carbon and oxygen atoms. Now, not all classes of alcohol can be easily oxidised. Our primary alcohols can be easily oxidised. We can see that we have the hydrogen atom on our hydroxyl group and we have other hydrogen atoms bonded to that carbon. So I will observe an easy oxidation of our primary alcohols. Our secondary alcohols similarly can be easily oxidized. Again, we can identify that hydroxyl group and a hydrogen atom bonded to that carbon atom. However, our tertiary alcohols are not easily oxidized. Although we have that hydroxyl group containing our hydrogen atom, we do not have a hydrogen atom on the carbon atom that's bonded to our hydroxyl group. So it's not to say that our tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized, it's just that they're not easily oxidized. So let's take a look at the oxidation of our primary and secondary alcohols. Our primary alcohols can be easily oxidized. They can be partially oxidized to form an aldehyde or completely oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. So let's take a look at those two situations right now. Here you can see the reaction of propan-1-ol, our primary alcohol, to form an aldehyde, and you may recognise the aldehyde functional group. Now, as you can see, there are specific conditions required for this reaction, including the use of acidified potassium dichromate. So let's take a look at some of those conditions now. The first is this reaction requires gentle heating and our primary alcohol must be heated with acidified potassium dichromate, our oxidizing agent. This acts as a source of oxygen and we can represent it in our equation as an O given in square brackets. Now, if we want to obtain our aldehyde, which in this case would be propanol, we must immediately distill the reaction mixture. This is in order to prevent any further reaction and any further oxidation. In this reaction, we'll observe a colour change from orange to green as oxidation has occurred. The second situation is when we form a carboxylic acid. Again, we have our propan 1 ol molecule. This time it's being oxidised, again by the same oxidising agent, acidified potassium dichromate, to form a carboxylic acid with that carboxylic acid functional group. If we do not immediately distill the reaction mixture, further reactions will occur further oxidation of our aldehyde will occur. And the specific conditions required for this are that we must heat under reflux. Heating under reflux is a practical technique, which is a process of constant boiling and condensing. And this ensures that the reaction goes to completion and minimizes loss of reactants and products as vapor. 
Furthermore, we must also use an excess of our oxidizing agent, that's excess acidified potassium dichromate, to ensure there's enough oxidizing agent to allow our alcohol to become fully oxidized. And again, as oxidation is taking place, we observe that color change from orange to green as the reaction occurs. So let's go ahead and have a look at the oxidation of our secondary alcohols. We know our secondary alcohols can also be oxidised. Here we have propan 2 -ol. You can see this hydroxyl functional group is bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to two alkyl groups. When our secondary alcohols are oxidised, we form ketones, and you may recognise the ketone functional group. The conditions required to oxidise our secondary alcohol are relatively similar to those required to oxidise our primary. We heat under reflux to ensure the reaction goes to completion, and our oxidising agent is again acidified potassium dichromate. Unlike our primary alcohols, when our secondary alcohols are oxidised, they form only ketones, and no further reactions occur. And as oxidation is indeed occurring, we see a colour change from orange to green in our solution. We've discussed how our tertiary alcohols are not easily oxidised. We have an example of a tertiary alcohol here. We have 2-methyl propan 2 ol This tertiary alcohol, if heated with acidified potassium dichromate, this tertiary alcohol will not undergo oxidation and will observe no colour changes. Alcohols are soluble in water and have higher boiling points than their corresponding alkanes. Explain in terms of intermolecular forces why this is the case. But we know that it's primarily due to the fact that alcohols are able to hydrogen bond to water molecules or to other molecules of alcohol, whereas alkanes only interact with van der Waals forces of attractions. And we know that these hydrogen bonds are much stronger than van der Waals forces of attraction. And the hydrogen bonds that alcohol is able to form with water explains its solubility in water, and the intermolecular hydrogen bonds explain its higher boiling point when compared to the weaker van der Waals forces of attraction that we see with our alkanes. I have explained that alcohol molecules are able to form intermolecular hydrogen bonds and form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. Alkanes only have van der Waals forces of attraction and hydrogen bonds are much stronger than van der Waals forces. We get our first mark for explaining that alcohol molecules can form hydrogen bonds both with other alcohol molecules and with water molecules. Our second for explaining that, unlike alcohol molecules, Alkanes only have van der Waals forces of attraction. And explaining that hydrogen bonds are much stronger than van der Waals forces of attraction gets us our third and final mark. So let's move on to question two. Butanol exists as four isomers. Draw all four and state whether they are primary, secondary or tertiary alcohols. So let's begin with the most straightforward of our isomers. Bute is telling us there is four carbons. So we have one, two, three, four. If we have alcohol functional group on our first carbon and we fill in the rest of our hydrogens. We can see this is a primary alcohol as the carbon that our functional alcohol group is only attached to one alkyl group. So let's try and think of a second isomer. We could again have a four carbon chain but this time have our OH group on our second carbon. We can see that the carbon that our functional group is attached to is attached to two alkyl groups, so we have a secondary alcohol. Our third isomer, we could have a three carbon chain this time, with a methyl group and our functional group on our second carbon. You can see that the carbon that our functional group is attached to is attached to three alkyl groups, so we have a tertiary alcohol. Our fourth and final isomer. This one is a little bit more difficult because we've been through all of the straightforward options. We could again have a three carbon chain and we could have a methyl group on our second carbon. But unlike the isomer that we previously drew where the functional group was also on the second carbon, we could have it on our first carbon. Filling in the rest of our hydrogens, we can see that the carbon that our functional group is attached to is attached to only one alkyl group. So we have another primary alcohol. So this question was a little bit more complicated, asking us to find four isomers and draw them all. For each of our correct isomers, which we've identified as primary, secondary or tertiary, we receive one mark. Getting us a total of four marks for that question.
Question three. The structure of ethane 1,2-diol and ethanol are shown below. And we're shown ethane 1,2-diol, which has two hydroxyl functional groups. And we're shown the structure of ethanol. Ethane 1,2-diol is less volatile than ethanol, so it has a higher boiling point. We're asked to suggest why this is. Well, we know that between our molecules of alcohol, there are intermolecular hydrogen bonds. Now, as ethane 1,2-diol has two hydroxyl groups, we might be able to suggest that there are stronger intermolecular hydrogen bonds, and this allows for a higher boiling point. So, let's go ahead and see how we would answer this question. As we're being asked to suggest why this is, it might require us to think outside the box. I've explained that ethane 1,2-diol has more hydroxyl groups and so there are stronger intermolecular hydrogen bonds. I've thought a little bit outside the box and used what I know about intermolecular forces of attraction between our alcohol molecules and applied that to this question. So the first mark comes from stating that the ethane 1,2-diol has more hydroxyl groups and the second for explaining that this will lead to stronger hydrogen bonds between our molecules of alcohol. In question four, propan 1-ol is a primary alcohol and we're given the structure of propan 1-ol here. Describe the oxidation of propan 1-ol when a suitable oxidizing agent is used. You should describe the different conditions and the organic products that are formed. In your answer, you should include the appropriate reagents, observations and equations. And we're asked to use the structural formulae and use an O in square brackets to represent our oxidising agent. This question is worth six marks. It's one of those longer answer questions. So in this question, we're asked to do a number of things. We're asked to talk about the oxidation of propan 1-ol, a primary alcohol, and we're asked to talk about the different products forms when different conditions are used. Now we know that in order to oxidise our alcohols, we require an oxidising agent. We're going to use acidified potassium dichromate, although acidified sodium dichromate is an alternative reagent. Now we know that with our primary alcohols, we can form aldehydes and carboxylic acids, depending on the conditions used. If we immediately distill the reaction, we know we'll form our aldehydes hide and if we allow the reaction to go to completion by heating under reflux we will form the carboxylic acid. So those are the different conditions that the question alludes to. We must remember that we're asked to use the structural formulae and we're told that we can use an O in square brackets to represent oxidizing agent. So let's go ahead and see how we would begin answering this question. I've initially explained that propan 1 ol our primary alcohol, can be mixed with acidified potassium dichromate, our oxidizing agent. Now we can go ahead and describe the different conditions of our reaction. I've explained that when heated gently then distilled immediately, the aldehyde is formed, and I've given a equation for that. We can see we have the structural formula for our propan 1-ol reacting with our oxidizing agent, which is represented as an O in square brackets, to form our aldehyde, in this case propanal, and a molecule of water. And I've explained we observe a colour change from orange to green. Here we've explained the partial oxidation to the aldehyde. Now I can go ahead and explain the second situation, the oxidation of our primary alcohol to form the carboxylic acid. I've explained that if heated under reflux, the carboxylic acid is formed, and I've given an equation for that. Again, we have our propan 1-ol, our primary alcohol, being oxidised to form our carboxylic acid, in this case propanoic acid, and a molecule of water. And we observe a colour change from orange to green. So this question carries six marks. Let's go through our answer and see where each of those six marks comes from. The first mark comes from mentioning a suitable oxidising agent. In this case, I've mentioned acidified potassium dichromate. Two marks are held for discussing the partial oxidation to the aldehyde. The first for explaining that we need to heat gently, then immediately distill. And the second for a correct equation, showing the oxidation of our primary alcohol to our aldehyde. Two marks are held for our second situation, where our primary alcohol is oxidised to form our carboxylic acid. We get one mark for explaining that we must heat under reflux, and the second mark is held in the equation. Now this question concerns the oxidation of our alcohol, so it's important that our equation shows the oxidation of our alcohol to form the carboxylic acid, rather than the aldehyde to form the carboxylic acid. So we get a second mark for that. The sixth and final mark is gained for explaining that when oxidation occurs, we observe a colour change from orange to green. So there we go. This answer gets the full six marks. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. 
If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.